The Oakland NAACP is very upset with the state of Oakland. They're looking around. They're saying, wow, there's a lot of crime happening here. Education systems seem to be broken. A lot of our policies are not resulting in anything useful for our citizens. And they're upset about it. And this woman, who is named Cynthia Adams, the leader of the NAACP out in Oakland, she sent an open letter along with a local bishop that explains what the problems are. And here is what one letter says. From Oakland branch of the NAACP out of Oakland, California, says, End Oakland's public safety crisis. This was written by Cynthia Adams, the president, and we're going to hear more from her in a minute. But she's the Oakland branch president of the NAACP. She's also here with Bishop Bob Jackson, the senior pastor from the Gospel Church. Now she says, Oakland residents are sick and tired of our intolerable public safety crisis that overwhelmingly impacts minority communities. Murders, shooting, violent armed robberies, home invasions, car break-ins, sideshows, and highway shootouts have become a pervasive fixture of life in Oakland. And we call on all elected leaders to unite and declare a state of emergency and bring together massive resources to address our public safety crisis. African Americans are disproportionately hit the hardest by crime in East Oakland and other parts of the city. But residents from all parts of the city report they do not feel safe. Women are targeted by young mobs and viciously beaten and robbed downtown and uptown neighborhoods. Asians are assaulted in Chinatown. Street vendors are robbed in Fruitvale. News crews have their cameras stolen while they report on crime. PG&E workers are robbed and now require private security when they're out working. Everyone is in danger. Failed leadership, including the movement to defund the police, which to be fair to the NAACP, they were not on board with that. If you go over to the NAACP's website, and I did this morning, I saw that they have a reform the police page, but if you look up the history of their position on defund the police, they were never in support of it. They think they realized that that was a lunatic idea that was being promoted by the ultra far left that was even too far for them. Now, they said failed leadership, including the movement to defund the police and our district attorney's unwillingness to charge and prosecute people who commit murder and commit life serious and threatening crimes and the proliferation of anti-police rhetoric, whoa, have created a heyday for Oakland criminals. If there are no consequences for committing crime in Oakland, crime will continue to soar. People are moving out of Oakland in droves, she says. And this is the great resort. You know, these problems are going to fix themselves because people will resort into areas of competence. They'll just leave. They'll just, okay, I'll go over here there. And if there is another competent place, then the more competent place will thrive. And these less competent places where they are promising people everything, getting on back of these popular movements that really are destructive, then they are going to see this problem happen. People will physically leave and people are leaving California in massive numbers. You can look at the U-Haul rates going in and out of the state. And once people start to leave, they have less economic activity, less tax income, and the city just spirals out of control. And this is just one city amongst many. Many are blue cities promising that they're going to have all of these reforms and that they're going to create this just society and this utopia, but they cannot deliver on it because their policies are bad. They are afraid to venture out of their homes to go to work, to shop to dine in Oakland, and this is destroying economic activity. Businesses, small and large, struggle and close. Tax revenues vanish, and we create the notorious doom loop where life in our city continues to spiral downward. As economic pain increases, the conditions that help create crime and criminals are exacerbated by desperate people with no employment opportunities. She says, we are in crisis and our elected leaders must declare a state of emergency and bring resources together from the city, the county, and the state to end the crisis. We are 500 police officers short of the number that experts say Oakland needs. Our 911 system does not work. Residents now know that help will not come. When danger confronts them worse, criminals know that too. Our youth must be given alternatives to crippling desperation that leads to crime, drugs, and prison. They need quality education and mentorship, and most importantly, real economic opportunities. Oakland should focus on creating skilled industrial jobs and logistic jobs that pay families sustaining wages and vocational training like the trades so Oakland residents can perform those jobs. With this focus, we can produce hundreds, if not thousands of these types of jobs desperately needed to stem the economic despair. Unfortunately, progressive policies policies 
and failed leadership have chased away or delayed significant blue collar job development in the city, in the Port of Oakland and the former o Army base. That must change. We also must continue with mentoring programs like the Oakland branch of the National OK program that steers youth away from criminal activity. We believe that young people currently in the criminal life will choose another path if they're shown away. We urge African Americans to speak out and demand improved public safety. We also encourage Oakland's white, Asian, and Latino communities to speak Speak out against crime and stop allowing themselves to be shamed into silence by mostly the blue team, if not entirely the blue team, the left. How dare you talk about this criminality? How dare you defend yourself? We'll prosecute you. If you defend yourself on a subway from a, a violent attacker, charge you with a crime. Don't be shamed into silence. Hard to do that when you're being arrested, thrown in handcuffs. There is nothing compassionate or progressive about allowing criminal behavior to fester and to rob Oakland residents of their basic rights to public safety. It is not racist or unkind to want to be safe from crime. No one should live in fear in our city. We need our elected leaders to take responsible action to ensure public safety. The best way to start is to declare that we are in a public safety emergency. Then we have to marshal resources to address the crime, create up economic opportunities and training and youth mentoring so people can work and live productive lives. We encourage the entire Oakland community to join a broad-based united coalition around these three issues. One, we have an emergency. Two, we must end the proliferation of crime and three, we must provide jobs, training, and mentorship so our youth have alternatives to crime. Do it for the love of Oakland. Each and every one of us has a right to live peacefully and safely. Signed by President Cynthia Adams and Bishop Bob Jackson. And it seems like it's a letter a little bit against the grain, saying, hey, your progressive policies and your compassion, so-called, is causing this problem. Wake up. Maybe if you return to normality and stop living in this liberal fantasy utopia, we can have some order back in our society. And here is Cynthia Adams. She had this great conversation with this gentleman over on YouTube. I am so delighted to have as my special guest today, the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, Cynthia Adams, who is the president of the Oakland branch. Again, Cynthia, I think you're doing an outstanding job. Let's talk about jobs, development of jobs right here in the city of Oakland. What do you think ought to be happening here? We need more jobs. Mm -hmm. We need more businesses coming to Oakland. Now, how are they gonna come to Oakland with every time you park your car downtown, somebody's breaking That's into your car? We do not have jobs. Most of the young men and young women is doing that. It's not in school, as you know. If you got them 13 years old to 21, they're supposed to be somebody in somebody's schoolhouse. So that means someone is not getting educated so they can be able to come out and get jobs. So you see the role of education as being critical. I know you used to be the yes. uh, chair of the education committee of the NAACP. Let's tie in education to economic development. Education, according to Malcolm X, is the key to our future, but it actually is the passport to our future. So if our children are not educated, then what is likely to happen to them? They're gonna be robbing you. They're gonna be killing you. They're gonna be breaking into your homes. They're gonna be breaking into banks. They're gonna be doing everything because they need money to survive. You have to have money to survive. Yeah, but some of these people are just smashing windows for the sake of smashing windows now. They need something to do. Purpose. You know, Bob, when you took trade school out of the city of Oakland. Yes. You took you took after you took plumbing, you took carpeting, you took culinary arts, you took computer science, you took everything. Well, 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 why did they do that? It just seemed to be such well, a dumb Bob, move. They wanted every child to go to college. Right every there. child's not going to Everybody. college. And then you know I, I'm a hard for Colleges. Right. But every child is not going to college. Do you know how much a plumber That's racist makes? though, isn't it? Yeah. You know every time I call a plumber, I start crying because right, I know he's right. going to rob me. But the schools <laughs> was giving that to them. Hey, and I think this is a great point. I listened to a beautiful interview with Joe Polish on the I Love Marketing podcast with Joe Polish and this guy called Tommy Mello. Tommy Mello is the CEO of A1 Garage. It is now a national garage door company. And he built this thing from $50,000 in debt to a, I think he's netting about 50 million a year personally, built a trade business repairing garage doors into this national company. Absolutely inspiring. I would really encourage you to look it up. I love marketing, Joe Polish, Tommy Mello. And 
there is so much opportunity in the world of atoms rather than the world of bits and all of these other, you know, upper education, so-called, you know, advanced jobs and everything. There is so much opportunity here, but for some reason, the society in many of these entities have just said that those are, are less valuable in places like Oakland have pushed those out is what she's saying. But those are very valuable, very important jobs in this society to do and once they graduated from high school they was automatically able to go into a union and begin it to work and get the train we got to bring that back well we who's got to bring it back what are they training people to do in terms of technical training in our high schools now i don't know what they're doing what do you because mean you don't know? You used I, to be a counselor. I, I used to work in the school system. And when I worked what in the school doing? system, we had all these things. Ah. We had everything. We had also, do you remember when you was going to the airport every day back in the day? Castleman High School had yes. a deli there. Yes, yes. That was because of the academies. They took all of that away. So when you take things away, what is going to happen to your city? What's going to happen? It's going to crumble. Well, a lack of knowledge, a city will what? Perish. Right. Yeah, now they're, now they're more focused on pronouns and making sure we have the appropriate pronouns located in their, you know, I don't even know what's going on in the high schools. She doesn't apparently know either. But I think this is a very interesting revelation, right? People are now going to start seeing it. The promises have been made, but the promises cannot be kept. And so cities are going to have to reevaluate all of these policies. She's blaming progressive policies. She's blaming defund the police. She's saying what you guys have said is going to be creating justice in our society is not. It's doing the opposite. So very interesting now. We'll see what the other people at the NAACP says. We'll see what maybe the White House says about this, because as far as we know, they think they're doing a great job with all of these progressive policies. She disagrees.